Are you ready to be whole emotionally? Today's message has some simple answers to one of our big health issues, and that's our emotional health. As I said, it's impossible to have a healthy life and an unhealthy mind. Just that simple. So you can just write this down. Can't do it here while I'm teaching, but you need to have a meeting with yourself. <laughs> and you need to ask yourself, what is my mind like? If we could turn your mind into a picture screen and show everybody in here what goes through your mind in a day, would you like that? And sometimes we think, well, it doesn't hurt to think it. Nobody knows anyway. Well, that's not true because thoughts lead to actions. The Bible says plainly, as a man thinks, so does he become. I say it a little different way. Where the mind goes, the man follows. It's pretty simple. You think about a hot fudge sundae long enough, you're going to go get one. You have to be very careful what you put your mind on. Ephesians 4, 22. I'm trying to go a little slow today because I want to make sure that you have a little sila time here. That means time to pause and kind of think about what I'm saying. Sometimes we preachers can just spill it out so fast that it sounds great, but nobody knows what we said when we got done. Ephesians 4.22 says, Strip yourselves of your former nature. Put off and discard your old unrenewed self, which characterized your previous manner of life, and becomes corrupt through lust and desires that spring from delusion. Another way of just saying it simply is, stop sinning. <laughs> and right away we think, I'm trying to. <laughs> what do you think I'm here for today? Now, if we could just skip for a minute to verse 24. Let's don't show them verse 23 yet. Let's go to verse 24. And put on the new nature. Strip off the old nature, put on the new nature. The regenerate self created in God's image, God-like in true righteousness and holiness. So, wow. In verse 22, we say, stop that old way of living. Stop sinning. Now, in verse 24, it says, and live a holy life and put on the new nature. And we're like, I'm trying. But now let's see the bridge, verse 23. This is the part that people miss. And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind. <laughs> How often? Once a year? Once a week? Once a day? No, constantly. Be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. It just absolutely amazes me some of the junk that can jump in my head the first five minutes I'm out of bed in the morning. I mean, I'm like, what? See, nothing good happens accidentally. So good things have to be chosen. But bad things will happen where there's no opposition. Now, can you get that? Because that's very important. Bad things will happen where there's no opposition. And the example I, I like to use is you cannot catch health, but you can catch disease. If you're around somebody that's got the cold or the flu, you already start out, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to catch that. And you just know you don't have to do anything. You don't got to believe for it or nothing. You just stand there and you can catch it because that's the nature of evil. <laughs> if you don't get away from it, do something to protect yourself, you'll get it. But you can be around a healthy person till Jesus comes back and you cannot catch their health. You have to choose that. And so we get up in the morning and 
Not think about nothing. Don't want to think about nothing. That's me. I want to think about nothing. Give me my coffee and shut up. <laughs> Get out of my space. <laughs> you know, I'm just not a morning person. I'm not mean, but I do like my time. Dave gets up singing. I'm like, Oof. <laughs> my mind could just be real lazy in the morning. Are any of you like that? You, your mind could just be lazy in the morning. <laughs> but what happens if it is, if there's no opposition to the enemy, then he's going to start putting all kinds of stupid thoughts in your minds, and a lot of them are about other people. Isn't that amazing? You know why? Because the devil just works overtime trying to mess up relationships. Because he knows if we can ever work together, our power against him is going to be multiplied over and over and over and over. Come on now. This is worth hearing today. You're brushing your teeth thinking, well, I worked my behind off last night and cooked that great meal. Nobody even told me it was good. <laughs> then the next minute you're thinking, you know that birthday present Susie got me was really cheap, and I bought her a nice birthday present. <laughs> I mean, you can go all over the world in five minutes thinking about everything that everybody ever did that aggravated you. Come on. And you don't have to try. You don't have to try at all. But if you want to think good thoughts, you have to try. You got to try to do that. You got to say, no, I will not think that junk. Been there, done that, am not going to live in that prison any longer. I'm not worrying about what people have done to me, haven't done to me, what they did give me, didn't give me. I got a job to do today, and it's to love other people, to be good to other people, to aggressively think about other people. Now, when you begin to act like that, the devil gets nervous. You see, I think we need a revolution, a total, radical, complete change in how we do business as human beings. Because I am just up to here with unhappy, miserable Christians. We're supposed to be the happy folks, the light of the world. So we have to do something about our minds. That's just all there is to it. Now, I've got about six things here I'm going to mention. Each one could be a series, but I think if we want to have mental health, mental wholeness, then there's a few things we have to realize that God has told us to stay away from. One of them is worry and anxiety. <laughs> now, I know right now, 500 of you thought, I can't help it, I'm just a worrier. Stop that, I can't help it stuff. Remember we said last night, we can do whatever we want to do. Because anything that God tells us to do, He will give us the ability to do it if we will get into agreement with Him and make the effort and exercise and be diligent. He gives us the promise. He says, here, you don't have to worry and be anxious. You don't have to worry about the future. I'll take care of you. You don't have to worry about your provision. I'll take care of you. You pray, trust me, I'll take care of things. You may not know how it's going to happen. You may not see how it's happening. But you keep your trust in me, and I will work things out. Now, that's God's promise. But you get up in the morning, you're brushing your teeth. Not thinking about anything in particular. Here comes the devil. This stuff ain't working. You better get a plan. You better get a backup plan just in case old God don't come through. <laughs> come on, don't tell me you don't think like that. And our backup plan is to worry and be anxious about what we can do to finagle and work things out just in case. And you know I'm right. And I found that we got to get violent. The violent take the kingdom by force. But we don't need to be violent with people. We need to be violent with the enemy who tries to destroy our lives through all this stinking thinking. And the minute the enemy comes and says, yeah, this stuff ain't working. You've been praying 20 years. 
your husband's meaner than he was when you started. <laughs> you can say, yeah, well, you ain't stealing my joy because nothing's impossible with God. And today may be the day. And you know, here's the, here's the point. And let's just get right down to it. I can't promise you. I cannot promise you 100% that the guy will ever change because part of it's up to him. But I can promise you that you don't have to let him bother you. <laughs> I can promise you that right in the midst of all these things, you are more than conquerors and you can have joy and you can have peace and you can be a great witness and you can have a good life. But you got to get your mind in the right place. When you worry and you're anxious, you're gambling. <laughs> well, I know the Bible says not to worry, but I just can't help it. <laughs> you know, my mother worried, grandma worried, and that's just, I'm just a worrier. I just worry about my kids. I just worry that my husband might lose his job. Well, you know what? You might just worry some of it into existence. Yeah. Because what you believe for, you get. Not just in the positive, but in the negative. So worrying about it will not help your situation, but it could open the door for you to get. Especially if you start thinking about it and then talking about it, thinking about it, talking about it, thinking about it, talking about it, thinking about it, talking about it, talking about it, thinking about it. Second thing is the healthy mind is not confused. So many people are confused. If I'd have walked in here this morning and said, how many of you have been experiencing a lot of confusion about your future? I mean, there would have been more hands up than down, I can promise you. But God is not the author of confusion. Well, why do we get confused? Because we reason. The devil wants to fill our mind full of reasonings. He wants us to try to figure it out. Your mind rotating around and around. I was always one of those kind of people, I wanted to figure it out. Dave and I'd have an argument and I'd stay up all night trying to figure it out. <laughs> Why did this happen? This same thing happens all the time. Every time we try to talk about that thing, this happens. And so how did this happen? I'm getting more and more upset all the time. Dave's in bed sleeping. <laughs> Got the feather comforter pulled up to his neck. And I'm in the other room about to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Said to God about 3 o'clock in the morning, God, what am I going to do? I just can't take this anymore. God, you've got to tell me what am I going to do. He said, why don't you try going to bed? That's what, that was God's great answer for me. Why don't you try going to bed? Hello? <laughs> we are not going to figure it out. We're not supposed to live by figuring things out. We're supposed to live by discernment. And discernment happens in here. It doesn't happen up here. <laughs> That's not where it happens. Go to Mark 8. You all doing okay? Yeah. Now just for those that are just maybe right now turning on your TV and you're thinking, what is all that stuff she's got up there? I'm just trying to make the point in this lesson that life is not some kind of a game where you just roll the dice, see where you end up. No, God said, I set before you life and death. Choose life. We're not gamblers. We're not rolling the dice and just gambling, but we're investing. We're doing what God tells us to do on the front end, believing that we will have a reward after we've invested. Amen? All right, now here's kind of the way we are. This will be amusing, but it gets a point across. Mark 8, 13. And he went away and left them. Getting into the boat again, he departed to the other side. This is Jesus. And um, 
Now they had completely forgotten to bring any bread. And they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And Lord only knows we got to have lunch, so. And Jesus repeatedly and expressly charged and admonished them, saying, Look out, keep on your guard, beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod and the Herodians. <laughs> now, here he's trying to give them a deep spiritual lesson. And they discussed it and reasoned with one another. Is he saying that because we don't have any bread? <laughs> See, they weren't any different than us. And being aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you reasoning and saying it? Is it because you have no bread? Do you not yet discern or understand? Are your hearts in a settled state of hardness? Having eyes, do you not see with them? And having ears, do you not hear and perceive and understand the sense of what is said? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000? How many small hand baskets full we picked up? And when I fed the other thousands, how many we picked up? You know what? Whatever kind of a mess you're in right now, and no matter how tempted you are to try to figure it out, just stop and remember some other great thing that God did for you. And if you're thinking right now, I just don't think I'm going to make it. I just don't think I can make it through this. I don't think I can stand it. That's one of the things the devil puts in your head. I can't stand this. I can't stand this. I can't stand this. I'm going to go over the edge. I can't stand this. I can't take it one more day. Yes, you can. And you need to start believing that you can do whatever you need to do. You have to believe that you can do whatever you need to do in life. You got to make some decisions. I am never going to give up. I am going to think the way that I'm supposed to think. And I'm going to be part of starting a love revolution in my lifetime. Well, somebody in this building, just make your mind up that you are not going to live the way you've been living unless the way you've been living is the way Jesus tells you that you can live. But you're not going to live worried and afraid and confused and full of reasoning and trying to figure something out all the time. You don't have to live in reasoning. Of course, Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 are great scriptures about reasoning. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and mind. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge Him. He will direct your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. And otherwise, don't even think you're smart enough to figure out your own deal. A healthy mind is positive. It's not negative. You can work on that. Try to be thankful. Write down seven things every morning you're thankful for. It's just a little exercise to help get you turned in the right direction. By the second day, if you're having trouble, that shows where your brain's at. It means there's a lot of good stuff going on in your life that you haven't paid attention to for so long that you don't even know they're there anymore. I thank God for hot water. If you've been where I've been, you'd thank God for clean water. You'd thank God for running water. I mean, it's unbelievable some of the things that I see when I go to India and other places like that. Just unbelievable. A healthy mind is a humble mind. Boy. The Bible says, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Rate yourself with a humble, modest opinion. Thinking highly of other people. Even more highly than you do of yourself. Now that doesn't mean to have a bad attitude about yourself. Don't take that out of balance in Romans 12. But it really just means you need to look at other people and say, you know, you are valuable. And your ideas are valuable. And I want your input. Not have this high-minded, well, I'm right and you're wrong. And don't try to tell me nothing. And don't try to tell me what to do. Come on, I'm still smiling. Some of you stopped. Get yourself off your mind. Got lots of great scriptures for that. Don't have time to go to them. Number five, a made-up mind. And boy, that's an important point right there. That's when I say you can do whatever you really want to do because you have to make your mind up. But here's what, you have, here's what has to happen. You can't let stuff into your mind. You have to shut your mind against stuff. For example, and this is just a practical example. We all understand it. Whether you're doing this or not, you understand it. The very thoughts of trying to exercise and work out just gave me the creeps all of my life. 
And I had my excuse. I just can't do it. My schedule's too tight. There's no way that I can do it. Dave did it, but I can't do it. And then when I would try, I'd hurt myself. So that was my excuse. Well, every time I try to work out, I hurt myself. I got a bad back. I got a bad shoulder. <laughs> Just can't do that because I hurt myself. Well, I hurt myself because I was doing them wrong. And I was the type of person because I started so late in life that I needed a trainer, somebody that could show me how to do it right, so I didn't hurt myself. And here's what I finally decided. I finally thought, okay, look, maybe I can't go three times every week, but instead of thinking about what I can't do and letting that stop me, I'm going to start doing what I can do. And that's how I got started. I thought, I'm going to do what I can do. And the thing that was interesting about that is now there's very few weeks that I don't exercise three times because I'll do it wherever I'm at, and I do it because I want to. But let me tell you something. There's thoughts that try to get in your mind. Next week, I'm going to be off working on a book. And I was thinking through my schedule. And I thought, well, Monday I'm going to do this. And you know, I, guess I'll, I guess I'll go work out about this time. And then I thought, Wednesday, I don't know if I want to go Wednesday. Maybe I'll just skip Wednesday. And right there is where I go, nope. That's what you got. You got to not let it in. You have to not let it in. Now, if you feel like God's telling you to do that, that's fine. I mean, nothing has to be a law. We don't make things a law. If you let it become a law to you, you'll hate it. I could miss if I wanted to, but I don't really want to. I want to keep up that pattern because I see the benefit that I'm getting out of it in my life. And not only that, it's something that God told me to do. He said, if you want to be strong for the last third of your journey here and be able to do what I've got left for you to do, then this is something you need to do. So I'm doing it because I feel like I have a mandate from God to do it. But that doesn't mean that I don't look at it and, and faint in my mind. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying when I say don't let it in? Just don't let it in. Because when you let it in and you start to play around with it, where the mind goes, the man follows. And if you get by with it once, no consequence, you do it again. Pretty soon I'd be going twice a week. Then pretty soon I'd think, well, I still got a few muscles, maybe I can go once a week. And, you know, I, I have a great example of how as you, as you exercise these different things in your life, you get more accustomed to them, whether it's walking in love or being the one who's aggressive to keep the peace or whatever it might be. Things, it used to be so hard for me to apologize to Dave. And now I, I wouldn't stay mad five minutes. You couldn't, you couldn't give me enough to get me to waste a day staying mad. And I don't care who's right or who's wrong. Doesn't make me any difference. I see how stupid that all is. I just want to have peace. Well, so now, because I've exercised that and exercised that and exercised that, it's not hard anymore. Forgiving people, it is not hard to forgive people at all once you learn how to do it and realize that you're doing yourself a favor when you do it. You're not, doing, you're not giving somebody else something. You're helping yourself when you forgive. Why should you waste your day being all upset? Our thought life is critical if we want a whole and healthy life. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 says, to strip yourselves of your former nature and be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on the new nature that's been created in God's image. I love those scriptures. I can get from where I used to be to where I wanna be by changing how I think and so can you.